Today's drug is warfarin, brand names Coumadin and Jantavin. The therapeutic category is that it's an anticoagulant, more specifically a vitamin K antagonist. The main indications are for myocardial infarction, or MI, and thromboembolic complications. Warfarin is used to reduce systemic embolism risk after MI. Warfarin is also used as a preventative measure as well as in the treatment of various thromboembolic disorders such as venous and pulmonary thrombosis. It is also beneficial in treating and preventing complications due to cardiac valve replacements and embolic complications secondary to atrial fibrillation. It is important to note that warfarin does not reverse damage, but rather to prevent additional damage. Dosage form and strength. Warfarin comes in a tablet. It comes in a 1 mg, 2 mg, 2.5 mg, 3 mg, 4 mg, 5 mg, 7.5 mg, and 10 mg strength. Dosing by indication. Dosing adults on anticoagulation therapy. There is high variability due to genetic variations between patients as well as other factors such as diet, age, and race. INR will be used throughout this explanation. INR stands for International Normalized Ratio, and it is a measurement used for measuring the level of therapeutic effect of the anticoagulation. A high value corresponds with a high level of anticoagulation. It is also important to note that the INR elevation is often seen between 24 to 48 hours after initiation, but that INR may not represent a therapeutic anticoagulation in the patient. Unless guided by a patient-specific factor, initiate dosing at 5 mg by mouth every day for 3 days. Check the INR the morning of day 4. If the INR is less than 1.5, give the patient 7.5 to 10 mg by mouth every day for 2 to 3 days. If the INR is between 1.5 and 1.9, give the patient 5 mg by mouth every day for 2 to 3 days. If the INR is between 2 to 3, give the patient 2.5 mg by mouth every day for 2 to 3 days. If the INR is between 3.1 and 4, give the patient 1.25 mg by mouth every day for 2 to 3 days. If the INR is greater than 4, hold doses until the INR is less than 3. As mentioned, dosing is highly patient-specific, and dosing must change accordingly. For example, if a patient-specific sensitivity exists, initiate at a lower dose. For this patient, initiate 2.5 mg by mouth every day for 3 days and check the INR the morning of day 4. So in this example, now if the INR is less than 1.5, give the patient a lower dose between 5 and 7.5 mg by mouth every day for 2 to 3 days. And when I say lower dose, I mean comparatively to that patient that did not have any patient-specific sensitivities. So for an INR between 1.5 and 1.9, give the patient 2.5 mg by mouth every day for 2 to 3 days. If the INR is between 2 to 3, give the patient 1.25 mg by mouth every day for 2 to 3 days. If the INR is between 3.1 and 4, give the patient 0.5 mg every day for 2 to 3 days. And if the INR is greater than 4, hold the dose until the INR is less than 3. General maintenance dosing is between 2 to 10 mg by mouth every day. Maintenance dosing is based on a stable and therapeutic INR, which is based on the intensity. A regular intensity of anticoagulation generally has an INR goal between 2 and 3, while high intensity is between 2.5 and 3.5. Maintenance dosing nomograms may vary from institution to institution, so an example for a regular intensity anticoagulation dosing is as follows. If the patient is subtherapeutic, so the INR is low, if the INR is less than 1.5, increase the weekly dose by 10 to 20%, or you can consider a one-time dose between 1.5 to 2 times the daily maintenance dose. 
If the INR is between 1.5 and 1.7, increase the weekly dose by 5 to 15%, or a one-time dose between 1.5 to 2 times the daily maintenance dose. If the INR is between 1.8 and 1.9, if the last two INR readings were in range and there is no explanation for the change, do not adjust the dose. If the clinical judgment warrants dose change, increase the weekly dose between 5 to 15% or a one-time dose between 1.5 to 2 times the daily maintenance dose. Now, let's say the INR is within range. So the INR is between 2 to 3, so no dose adjustments should be made. Now, let's say the INR is in a supratherapeutic level, which is being too high. If the INR is between 3.1 and 3.2, no dose adjustment is made if there is no clear reason why the INR changed. Otherwise, decrease the weekly dose by 5 to 10%. If the INR is between 3.3 and 3.4, decrease weekly dose by 5 to 10%. If the INR is between 3.5 and 3.9, consider holding one dose and decrease the weekly dose by 5 to 10%. If the INR is greater than 4, but greater than or equal to 10, hold the dose until the INR is below the upper limit of the therapeutic range. Decrease weekly dose by 5 to 20%. And if the patient is at severe risk for bleeding, consider a low-dose oral vitamin K. If the INR is greater than 10 without bleeding, hold dose until INR is below the upper limit of the therapeutic range, decrease weekly dose by 5 to 20%, and administer oral vitamin K. Target INR ranges are based on indications. Check with the most current ACCP guidelines for appropriate INR ranges or check with the institutions that you work at. That will also cover the duration of treatments. So I will cover just a few as an example so you have an idea of what to expect. For example, in cardiac patients with MI with left ventricular thrombus or if high risk for left ventricular thrombus, the target INR is between 2 to 3 with a treatment duration of 3 months after the MI. In cardiac patients with AFib or A flutter, the INR is between 2 to 3 with an indefinite treatment duration. In cardiac patients with stress cardiomyopathy with acute left ventricular thrombus, the INR goal or the INR target is between 2 to 3 with a treatment duration of 3 months. Now in valve replacement patients, Aspirin is indefinitely used in combination with warfarin. In a valve replacement patient with an on-X mechanic bileaflet aortic valve with no additional risk factors for thromboembolism, the INR range or the INR goal is between 2 to 3 in months 1 through 3. Then the range is 1.5 to 2 for the INR for months 4 and after with an indefinite treatment duration. In another example for a valve patient that has a mechanical aortic valve or an older gen valve with additional risk factors for thromboembolism, the INR range is now 2.5 and 3.5 with an indefinite treatment duration. Transitioning between anticoagulants. Once again, it's definitely very important to check with the most current guidelines for accuracy or check with the institution for their guidelines. Here I will cover just a few as an example of what to expect. So for the transition between apixaban to warfarin, consider overlapping apixaban with warfarin for greater than or equal to two days until the INR is therapeutic. An alternative method is to stop apixaban and start warfarin the same day while bridging the patient with a parenteral anticoagulant, such as heparin. Another example is the transition of a parenteral anticoagulant to warfarin. Start warfarin while continuing the parenteral anticoagulant until the goal INR is achieved. Transitioning from warfarin to a different anticoagulant. 
Once again, check with the most current guidelines for accuracy or with the institution. I will cover just a few as an example of what to expect. So it is reasonable to discontinue warfarin and initiate the other anticoagulant once the INR is less than or equal to 2 or the patient-specific INR goal is reached. For the transition of warfarin to apixaban, discontinue warfarin and initiate apixaban as soon as the INR falls to less than 2. For the transition of warfarin to dabigatran, discontinue warfarin, initiate dabigatran as soon as the INR falls to less than 2. For the transition of warfarin to doxaban, Discontinue warfarin and initiate adoxapan as soon as the INR falls to less than or equal to 2.5. For the transition of warfarin to a parenteral anticoagulant, stop the warfarin and start the parenteral anticoagulant when the INR is as close as possible to the lower end of the INR range that is desired. Mechanism of Action and Pharmacology In order to understand how warfarin competitively inhibits coagulation factors, we must understand the synthesis of various clotting factors. Vitamin K is an essential part of the hepatic synthesis of coagulation factors 2, 7, 9, and 10, as well as protein C and S. In order for coagulation factors to be converted, active vitamin K must give up a carboxyl group in order for the conversion to occur. Vitamin K is then reactivated by the vitamin K epoxide reductase complex 1, and warfarin inhibits that complex, which then leads to the inhibition of coagulation factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. The absorption of warfarin is rapid and complete. The metabolism is hepatic through the CYP2C9 pathway, and to a lesser extent, the CYP2C8, the 2C18, 2C19, 1A2, and 3A4 pathways. It is important to remember to identify genomic variations of CYP2C9. The heterozygous STAR1, STAR2, or the STAR1, STAR3 genomic variant has approximately a 37% reduction in clearance. Patients with the homozygous STAR2, 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 STAR3, and STAR3, STAR3 allele variants have approximately a 70% reduced metabolism of the medication. Onset of Action Initial effects on INR are as soon as 24 to 72 hours, but the full therapeutic benefits are seen between 5 to 7 days, being limited by factor 2's long half-life of 60 to 72 hours. Time to peak is around 4 hours. Duration of action is between 2 to 5 days. Half-life elimination is between 20 to 60 hours, with an average of 40 hours. This medication is highly protein-bound at 99%. Special Populations and Considerations Hepatically impaired patients experience a decreased metabolism of warfarin, while renally impaired patients generally respond as expected. Elderly patients 60 years of age and older have a higher sensitivity regarding INR responses. Race plays a role in the Asian population, requiring lower initial doses and a lower maintenance dose. Side Effects Nausea, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, diarrhea, and dizziness. Serious side effects that require immediate attention are bleeding gums, blood in urine or stool, blurred vision, chest pain, difficulty breathing or swallowing, and confusion. There is a black box warning for bleeding risk, so warfarin may cause major and or fatal bleeding. Monitor the INR regularly for all patients. Monitor all drug and dietary changes on warfarin therapy. Teach patients on how to measure and minimize bleed risk. Drug interactions. Acetaminophen may enhance anticoagulation effects in doses exceeding 1.3 to 2 grams per day for multiple days. Alcohol may decrease the effects of warfarin. 
Barbiturates may increase the metabolism of warfarin. Dose increases between 30 and 60% may be needed while on barbiturates. Clopidogrel and NSAIDs may enhance anticoagulant effects of warfarin. Dose adjustments should be made if the patient is on any CYP2C9 inducers or inhibitors. Monitoring parameters. Monitor the international normalized ratio or the INR. So for initiation, monitor daily if inpatient. If outpatient, monitor every three to five days and one to three days if the patient is unstable. An example for maintenance monitoring of INR, if the patient is stable, monitor every one to three days. If the patient is unstable, monitor daily. If routine follow-up, every four to 12 weeks if stable and every one to two weeks if unstable. If dose was held, recheck the patient in one to two days. If the dose was adjusted on the day of the visit, recheck within one to two weeks. If the dose was adjusted less than or equal to two weeks ago, recheck within two to four weeks. Other monitoring parameters are genetic testing for CYP2C9 and VKORC1 genotype prior to initiation. Monitor for irregular bleeding and bruising, kidney function, and dietary changes. Patient counseling information. The patient should be informed that the medication is used to treat blood clots and thins blood to lower chance of heart attack, stroke, and death. The medication can be taken with or without food. Warfarin is usually administered once daily at the same time each day. High vitamin K foods, such as leafy greens like spinach, inhibit anticoagulation, so patients should not make any drastic changes to their diet.